So a very good uh, morning, afternoon, wherever you may be listening around the world. Welcome to A Kick in the Balearics. Uh, myself and Martin Makepeace talking about uh, Balearic football. Um, we talk about Real Mallorca, of course, and uh, Udi Ibiza, Atletico Balearis, Udi Boblense, uh, and also Peña Deportiva. We talk about Tethera and youth football too. But as you can probably see uh, from the screen this morning, we've got a very special guest. James Gordon uh, is joining us. Uh, James is a sports journalist and a media professional as well. And he joins us because he has his own website called menorcafootball.com. And uh, we thought it'd be fantastic to find out a little bit more because we were a bit confused, <laughs> which doesn't take a lot for us to, to be perfectly honest. We were a bit confused to, to, to wonder what, ha what has happened to Menorca football. We both are very passionate about our football in our, our islands, uh, me and my Yorker, Martin in Ibiza. Obviously, we, we know about Formentera because Martin's quite close to Formentera. And we, we've seen him do a cup run a couple of years ago. So we know what's happening with Formentera. But Menorca has been a bit of a... Uh, an odd, a sort of a strange oddity. We don't really re what what's gone on in Menorca over the last few years, and so we thought we'd get James on to to tell us a little bit more. James, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for uh, having me on. Great what you guys are doing, um, and you know, more than happy to try and get a bit more involved over time. Hopefully, if if some Menorcan clubs make a bit of progress, then hopefully we'll see that. So, James, just so you know, James is in Warrington, uh, up in the uh, northwest. And he um, gets involved in rugby league, football. He's, he's as I say, he's uh, the Northern Premier League. You're heavily involved in, aren't you? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So non-league football, do a lot of lot of that. I mean, I, I, I don't know whether at one time maybe uh, maybe someone will try and persuade me to bring a, a team to to the Belay uh, for a pre-season uh, tour or something. I'm sure someone's going to start tapping me up to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, tell me about Menorca football. What's uh, yeah, first of all? How did you get involved in it? Um, I, I mean, from my point of view, it was a bit of a random one, really. I used to go. Oh, well, I still do. I, I, when I was a kid, my own dad used to take me to Menorca on on holiday, um, and I suppose that's probably the country outside of the UK which I have, you know, uh, you know the biggest connection with. Um, Obviously, when I when I was younger, you didn't you know the internet wasn't as as prominent, and so you know finding information about what was going on you know wasn't as easy as it is now. Um, to be honest, probably about ten years ago, I probably thought there was only one team on the island. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember having a conversation with a, a journalist friend of mine, Matt, about. Um, I, I don't know whether we were we were we were looking at a football manager save or something like that, and we were looking for a team to to go at and. Um, I thought, oh, I'll have a look at I'll have a look at the Mahonis team um, from Menorca, and, see, and it just sort of spiraled from there. So um, it was hard finding information about. So I thought, oh, you know what, I quite fancy a little a little project to sort of get my teeth into and a bit of a side, and you know something I'm interested in, and sort of spiraled from there. And you know, over the last couple of years, I've spent a lot of time, you know, trying to build relationships and, and doing a lot of research, and you know, it, it's been quite nice. I said to you before before we started recording that you know it's difficult sometimes when when you work in sport because you work in sport because you love sport, but it also means that the the lines are blurred between your work and your hobby. Whereas what's been great about doing the Menorca football thing is it's felt like a really enjoyable thing to be doing, um, even though it's almost identical to sort of work that I do. If that makes sense, I enjoy it as if it is a if as if it is a hobby. So. Um, I mean, in terms of in terms of football on, on the island, and you know, there's, I think we're I'm just approaching the hundredth article, I think, on the site. So there's plenty on there um, to get your teeth into. I mean, you obviously you guys will know in in the sort of most recent um, seasons, and you'll have to apologise for my pronunciations because I'm I'm far less cultured than you two fellas. <laughs> um, obviously, Mercadal got relegated um, the season before last. Um, which was actually the first season, I believe, that there'd been no Menorcan clubs in sort of national, in the national tiers, if you, the national structure, if you like. Um, they were relegated a couple of seasons ago, but actually no team has been promoted for, for 10 years. So the other teams that were, um, the other teams that were in Tessera Division, Peña, Quitadel were in it. Um, they were relegated four or five years ago. Um, but actually, no one's made the jump the other way for, for 10 years. Um, there's a bit of 
you know, and you guys will be aware that the way the promotion playoffs work is very sort of heavily weighted in favour of the Mallorcan teams. Ooh, um, controversial. Ooh, yeah, controversial. Come on. Now, now, you know, now. You know, <laughs> which, well, when I say heavily weighted in favour, obviously, if they're the strongest teams, they're the strongest teams, you know what I mean? But ultimately, it's not, I, I should say, it's not... You're pushing an open door with me, mate. Here, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know... We all know, we all know that everything is in, in heavily weighted in favour of New York and the Balearics, but that's just the way it is. But that gives us more of a a pleasure when we actually succeed. Yeah. Uh, just, can I just interject here as well? What why has a New York uh, sorry Menorca had a representative in the Tercera Division? Because you know what is it? Fourteen, fifteen groups there of twenty teams. You know. We've got 300 teams in, in Spain. Why can't Menorca find what? I mean, there must be some good players. What, why do you think you can't find a team to get into Thera? Well, I, I think part of the issue is, is that the, the promotion thing is, is, is an issue because no matter how good the team, how good the best team in Menorca is, if they can't get through the playoff, you know, and anything can happen in a playoff system, you know, if they can't get through that, so like Merkid, I'll obviously played in it last seat last year and were pretty disappointed. At, you know, watched the game, they lost 2 1. It was a pretty disappointing end to, to their season. But ultimately, no matter how good the Menorcan teams are, if they lose in that playoff to the Menorcan teams, they're not going to get promoted. And it's just as, as simple as that. Now, obviously, it's changing this season because Menorca and, and Ibiza as well are guaranteed. A, a promotion spot. So the good news is, is that next season we definitely will have a Menorcan team in in the Tercera division. Um, so that is a massive positive, potentially two as well, because you know there's going to be a playoff, I believe, between Menorca and IB for runners up. Maybe I think that's right. Um, so protect, you know, so so it, it is going to be sort of corrected. And like you say, you look at that Tercera division and you think, well, how can they not have at least one? Menorcan yeah. team in there, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe yeah, more. I mean... Is, is it a failure of Balearic football, do you think, James, or not? Um, I mean, the Balearic Football Association, which we know of. Yeah, I, I, the, I, I, well, let, well let, let, me, let me lead it. I think it is a real big failure of the, of the Balearic uh, Football Association because we need representatives from all four islands, and we've got three. Yeah, I and, I, and, I, and I actually completely believe what you first said, it's so heavily stacked in favour of, of the bigger clubs per se that, that Menorca, and it's only a beta. We've, we, we've only just come into this game for the last five years, by the way. We, you're probably five or six years behind us, so a uh, should be able to show you what, what you're capable of. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think especially now with the introduction of the, you know, the new, the new Segunda division, the, the, the restructuring that's happening a bit higher up the food chain, that's obviously knocked to their division down another level. So it's like, you know, you're a bit like there should be multiple teams from Menorca, from Ibiza in, in the, Tatera, you know, the Billy Eric's thing, because the re, you know, the regional league, it's just like a bit of a glass ceiling, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's great to have a, you know, a 12 team Menorcan league or whatever, but you know, how can anyone, they're not, how can anyone improve each other when, you know, when you consider as well the size of the island and the, the number of players available anyway, um, you know, there's not really much to a, a aspire to either. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, like I said, I've, I've looked at a load of a load of things over time. I mean, you could even go back to the 70s when, you know, they made the two, they tried to merge the two Mahon teams, obviously create Sport and Mahones, and you ended up, instead of merging to create one sort of, not superpower, but superpower in relative terms. You ended up, you've ended up with a situation where you've instead of merging to create a superpower, you've now got three clubs in a city that's not particularly yeah. big in comparison to, you know, others. Um, do you do you think do you think this uh, the reason why Menorca ha aren't representative? Is it a reflection of the island where it's a little bit too laid back? Um, I wouldn't. I'm not sure about that. I think. I, I I do think, I mean, and you guys obviously have a have a have a great knowledge of me of of the sort of context of Spanish football and the and the wider um, culture. I, I obviously I naturally compare it to to what I see in, in non league football in England. I, you know, I live in I live in Warrington, which is a town of about two hundred thousand people, which is double the size of Menorca's population, basically. 
Um, yeah, yeah, on Menorca, there's 12 senior teams all playing, trying to, you know, and I, I, part of me wonders whether, you know, is the resource spread too thinly? Um, you know, and I understand you'd have lo- you always have local teams, but it'd be interesting. It, it, I suppose it's trying to differentiate. Is it? Are there enough clubs on the island that truly believe that they can sustain going up another level or another level beyond that? Or so what you're saying is, rather than twelve teams, you probably need four or six teams no. on, on, in a different tier. Yeah. Me, me, well, I'm not. Well, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean. If you look at if you look at, and I've got I'm writing a long piece about this at the moment about um, Sporting Mahonas and their demise. So it's I think it's nine years since um, they withdrew from Segunda Division B in, in the middle of the season um, because of financial problems. And I think if you look at you know the guy the, there was a, a, a Catalan promoter who was who was sort of attempting to bankroll it and and he they got promoted into Segunda Division B and obviously couldn't sustain it. And, and I think part, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that he did things right or wrong or anything like that. But one of the, one of the things that he questioned was for Menorca to go that high in the pyramid, do they need to have almost like a, a team that serves the whole of Menorca that the whole island gets behind? Well, well I'll, I'll, t- I'll, I'll give you the answer to that, James. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the only way that a team, because the problem we have, and I think you've, I think Richie probably doesn't see it as much as, as we do on the smaller islands because, you know, you how many? what's your population over there, Richie? 700,000, 600,000? 850,000. I mean, Ibiza is 135,000. I think Menorca is about 100,000, isn't it, James? I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just so, shy of that, yeah. So, you know, we as, as James has rightly said, 12, 12 teams on 100,000 island like Menorca, you know, it's baffling really, isn't it? But what it is, it, it's rivalries between villages, it's rivalries between towns, which are more concerned about beating each other's uh, villages than actually uh, succeeding to go up. And, and I think what James said there is exactly right. Well, I believe it is anyway. You need one feeder club. You almost need a representative team from, from Menorca. And you go, like, whether it be Sporting Mahan or whatever, and you go, well, listen, that is our team. And that's the one that we need to put our money in. At the moment, if you're going to bankroll 12 teams, then unfortunately that's going to be a, a really long and hard slog because it isn't happening. Yeah, and I think if you look at where Mahones were, and they were in Segunda Division B, which actually, you know, <laughs> there's no other Menorcan team being that high. I, I've read a few comments from players and stuff around that time, and they're, and they're sort of scratching their heads and thinking, well, why aren't why aren't fans coming out to watch us? You know, they weren't getting great crowds, and and it's and that's because of like what you just said, they were that is seen as one club out of twelve, yeah. and so the fans of the other clubs are just going to watch their clubs and they just see Mahones as a, as I am other clubs. So why would they go and watch them? Well, we've, what we've got in, in the Blairics is, is quite interesting because like Richie, your, your sons play for San Francisco, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And their arch rivals on youth football are Real Mallorca, aren't they? Yeah. Mm, so you're sure. watching, you're watching your lads play Real Mallorca uh, and you're never going to support Real Mallorca ever. Yet you go and support Real Mallorca in the, in the, in the Premier Division, uh, sorry, La Liga or L- L- Segunda. We've got the same over here where we go and watch Udi Ibiza, you know, and we love that. But who's our arch rival in youth football? It's Udi Ibiza, yeah? And I would never, ever support Udi Ibiza apart from the top level. So what you've got is you've got these different kind of senses playing against each other all the time. I don't know if you think the same, Richie, when youth football and, and, and football where, uh, and, and adult football where, you don't really know where your allegiance lies. In the UK, you've got one team and, and usually you stick with that one team or if you're a Man United fan, you usually got about five teams. <laughs> However, you know, um, you stick to that team. So the Blair, it's, I think fractured is, is probably the, the best word I would say. Well, one thing I would say, uh, and, and I'm, I'm sort of agreeing with the, um, with the uh, representative team of Menorca, but then I'm sort of disagreeing as well, thinking, so all those other clubs that have been around for years and years and years cannot make that step any further than they already are. And Mark, you know, Udi Abid is a perfect example of, of making that step forward. There needs to be someone really to come in with a bit of money and say, yeah, yeah. tell you what, I'm going to bankroll this club for a certain amount of money and I want it to get into such and such a division. But I think what is going to change, as as James has correctly said, is because they've now changed how the leagues are going to run next year. You then have an opportunity every year for a Menorcan team to 
um, get into to there or whatever it's going to be, and then maybe progress from there. But we all know it's going to be down to money for these clubs. You know, money brings better players. Better players bring better results. Better results bring better league positions. And league position, better league positions make, makes promotion. So it, it's all a big, you know, circle really here. And I'd feel a bit aggrieved if I was, you know, I don't know, one of the middle table clubs uh, that, you know, suddenly all of a sudden I've got, I don't know, Minorca United. And then I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know, CD Mijon, for, a, for a example. All of a sudden, I can't go up anywhere because, I'm, you know, all my best players are going to go to Menorca United. I just, I just, you're going to get, Richie, you're going to get that anyway. As you know, as you know, Mallorca, if you have a star player in your youth team, where's he going? He's going to Real Mallorca. Yeah? yeah, no, no, I get that. I don't, that part. We have that, we have that in Ibiza. You I, know, so it kind of funnels in. And the, right, what, I'm, what the, my original question to James was, is there a will in Menorca to get a team, a, a successful team? And probably not because of what uh, James has said, that they're all actually playing against each other all the time, yeah? So, which is, which is great on a local level, but on a national level, it just doesn't work. I, th- I think, I mean, I think, and like, again, you guys will know much more about this than me, but I, I do think it's probably um, a cultural difference in terms of how you know, like you mentioned Man United and things like that before, like none of us are bothered about Man United youth teams or their kids' teams, whereas obviously these local clubs, it's all about the participation. It's all about participation of young young people and, you know, women's teams and, and all that sort of stuff. It's not necessarily, you know, it's not as commercially driven as maybe football in England is, where, you know, like, at, you know, my local team, Warrington, are in the seventh tier and, you know, they want to get as high as they possibly can and, you know, they want to chuck, they, they want to try and grow the crowds and, and do X, Y and Z. It's like, is that motivate? which I suppose is what you're asking is, is that motivation there for any of these clubs to do that? I think it'll be interesting to see because I do think there's there's clubs with ambition in, in Menorca. I do think that it'd be very interesting to see what difference it would make having the three or four strongest clubs jump up into to there and see whether, you know, because all it takes is a good run and a good season and all of a sudden, you know, you're in the playoffs to potentially get promoted to another level. Well, let me ask you a question, James. Sorry, Richard, before I jump right. in. Uh, I know very little about Menorca football. I mean, you say we know a lot. We know a lot about Ibiza and New York football and Formentera as well. But who's the, so what, who's the strongest teams in Menorca as it stands? So at the moment, Merck the Merck and Dalla, the... They're the strongest team, I'd say. So they were relegated, as I said, a couple of seasons ago. Um, they retained quite a few players, so they've still got a decent side. Um, they're sort of the runaway lead. Well, they're turning into the runaway leaders at the moment. Um, obviously, it's been suspended for a little while. Um, UD Mahana, traditionally, they're the most successful team in, in history um, in, in Menorca. And they were the champions the season that Merck and got relegated. Um, then I think teams that have made a decent start Ali, Ali Ori are always sort of there or thereabouts they've got a really nice facility as well um, and then there's probably a clutch of teams around below them that are all sort of there's, there's, there's probably Mercadella you know head and shoulders above everyone else then there's a group that are quite close and then there's a few that are a bit cut away so the other teams that are in that contention in Migione you mentioned earlier um, UE Sammy um, are another team that are, are there or thereabouts. Um, and then you've got a few also runs a little bit. San Luis are a nice example of a, of a wider sporting club. And there, you know, they'd fancy getting a, a top half finish um, as well. I think, you know, you look at, I think you look at a few things and, and the, there's three teams. In, so Quitadel is the place where I would normally go and stay when I go to Menorca. Um there's three teams in in Ritadella and literally you could and and I say that people say there's this, you, there's the grounds are a stone's throw away and as like a bit of a metaphor but actually you could throw an actual stone between the three grounds that's how close that they are yeah you know and I, I, isn't that a prosper you know that's a preposterous thing to happen right and this this is what I'm saying and this is that there needs to be I don't know I don't know the Menorca football representatives as well but there needs to, in my opinion there needs to be a, an absolute rethink about this as well because if you've got three average teams in Fuitadilla, yeah, would it not be easier or better to merge them? I know this is like me saying Man United and Man City should merge, by the way. I understand that, okay, because of local rivalries, but you've got three average teams. Wouldn't it be better to have one 
above average team. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I would agree with you, you know, to an extent. I think, I think part of the issue is, as, is, as I said before, is, is, is the separation between participation and professionalism, if you like. Yeah, I agree. You know, the, the separating the difference between sure. kids and youth football and actually putting together your strongest senior team on, on the park. Now, if a few of these teams do get up into Tithera or whatever, so, like, so there's three teams here in Quintadella, which is Sammy... Uh, Pena and, and Athletic, Athletic Quintadella. If say if one of those went up, then obviously you sort of look at them. They're the senior team, and yeah, the other two teams can still have their senior team playing in the regional league. But there's clearly a, a hierarchy there then, and you'd like to think that you know they would support those teams. And and I suppose that is the that is the concern is that you know is this is it is it tribal i mean it, i'll try and speak to someone actually you know after this is it tribalism you know yes, yes it is yeah let's we can stop the conversation yeah, there mate yeah. we, know Balleri, we, we know what Balleri football football's like yes it is and this is what I'm, this is my whole point here as well i get it listen i'm from san antonio and i don't want to if you said to me you've got to merge with san jose you'd be like what listen we, we'd, we'd have a, a massive riot However, we're talking about representative football and, and obviously something's got to change because it's not working. Now, the only way Menorca are going to get into the Tuthera division, as we've said at the moment, or a team from Menorca, is by them getting a guaranteed place, which I think is a, which I think is a positive, by the way. Because it's ha- it's to- happening this season. It is happening yeah. this season. I didn't so. know that. I know, I know that you, you, you said that before and Richie's mentioned it before. I didn't actually know that. But, OK, great. It's almost like a franchise. You now got you, you've now you've got your franchise team in in the in the Balearic uh, group, um, uh, Tefera, uh, group as well. So, which is good, but I'm not sure that's the that's the best way to do it. But hey, listen, we'll take it. I I, I think that I think that what what needs to happen for Menorca is the the strongest three or four teams. So you know maybe Mercadal, maybe UD Mahan, maybe CD Menorca, maybe um, and then maybe Ali or something like that need to get up. A division, you know, into this area, and then see how that changes the the scope of, of yeah. things in terms of the quality of players, the number of fans. Because you know, the, the part of the issue is is that you know you restrict, you are restricted by your population. There's no, you know, there's no doubt about it. If 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 you need to get big crowd, you know, if you need a certain number of fans to watch every week to sustain being in a national division, then if you've only got a small catchment area then you're always going you know you're always going to struggle um you know and that might be a challenge that you can never you know they can never get back and people might point to the fact that you know and i mentioned before in the 1970s ud mahon and cd menorca had been fairly successful in the third division in in the 60s both got relegated at the start of the 70s and obviously there was economic problems and stuff like that and they were basically forced to merge to create sport in mahones then after a couple of months, there was a disagreement. Someone broke the legal. Someone broke one of the terms of the legal agreement, and effectively, them two clubs restarted themselves. But as they were banned from competing in national divisions, they had to create different team names, and that rumbled on for for twenty five years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, what, what you actually need, you know, and again, it's easy for us to sit here in our homes and say. You need one of the Menorca teams to become dominant, just like Udi Ibiza has become dominant in Ibiza, just like Real Mallorca has become dominant. And then it naturally all funnels into them, doesn't it? Natural. It's a natural thing. Yeah. Than supporting it. Is Mercadal the... not that team, uh, James? Um, I mean, they, they could be. Um, I guess I guess the thing with the thing with Mercadal is they're not in, you know, I mean, obviously the island's tiny anyway, so you can get to them. But I suppose... Mahon and Quintadella are the, the two main identities of the island. So yeah. it would be nice to have, you know, you you might you know, you might see Mercadal on the fixture list and you wouldn't necessarily know that they were a Menorcan team. No, Whereas if you saw Mahon or Quintadella or whatever, you know, maybe you would. But what um, but, but I'm interested to know what Merc- Mercadal are doing differently because you just said that they were in the playoffs or they, they, they got into the playoffs, they lost in the playoffs. Do you yeah. remember who they lost to in the playoffs? Uh, I think it was Pone- Ponense, is it? Uh, po- uh, oh, hang on a minute. Po- um, yeah, or Colorense? Colorense. Um, hang on. I'll, I'm, th- I'm sure it was... I'm sure it was... was, po- it, was I'm sure it's Poren- 
Perenens or something like that. I think. I'd like say I might. I mean, I'm. I'm. Um, hang on. Let me just try and find it. Um, the, the reason I'm saying is because Perret Perret P O R R E R E S. Oh, Pereres. Pereres, yes. Pereres. Sorry. Okay, so which is not, to be honest with you, a big town here. I mean, it's fa- fairly small, uh, Pereres. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, I, d- I couldn't even if I w- had a look on where they are right now. Um, I wouldn't even know. Let's put it like that. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what division <laughs> they're in. Uh, that, 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 that will tell you how, how good I actually know, know they are, Pereira's, right now. So, um, but what I'm saying is that they were the, Mercadal were the team that got to the playoffs and they're now top of the league. So they must be doing something. They must have something there uh, that's, you know. Well, that- I, mean, I mean, bear in mind that they, they'd been in, in Tessera division for, for multiple years. So I think it's just the fact that everyone else on the island has only been playing regional football for the last X number of years, whereas they've clearly still got a bit of the the structure or the strength or the infrastructure, or whatever you want to call it, from from those days. And I, and I do think that that, you know, again, it, it, it ties into the problem is, you know, having all your teams in the regional league, you're very sort of you're in your own bubble, aren't you? Really, like the Menorca, they're only as strong as each other. Whereas as soon as you start playing teams from other islands, who are maybe dragged up by their rivals on the island, maybe the the quality, will, you know, will increase. Um, well, I've just fa- I've just found Pereiras. They are in a, they are in a, a, like the same as you your regional um, league that you've got in Menorca. They're in a regional league of Mallorca, basically. So yeah, not... yeah. So obviously that's what happens with the playoffs at the end yeah. of each season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're top of their league as well. So um, right now, I think I think they must have stopped actually because um, because of the, the the coronavirus and stuff like that. But yeah, as I say, it's um, it's just interesting, you know, for us. There was a bit of a there was a bit of a, a dubious a dubious uh, free kick decision in in the in the game that I watched I should say as well. Um, it's always a dubious decision, Blair. It was a, it was a, a, a very it, very dubious. Wasn't one of the dads refereeing or something? Was no, it? Yeah, a, a very very dubious free kick decision it was uh, for the second goal. Um, but yeah, I mean. It, like I say, I think I think it it'll be really nice to see a team go up this year. I mean, hopefully the season re- does resume and, and that can all go through, um, you know, as as planned. I think you know I'd like to think that Menorca can sustain, you know, the Tercera division. Um, you know, whether it'll ever get back up to the new, I think are they calling it? Uh, it's Segunda. It's Segunda. It's going to be Segunda B, is it? I think. Well, they, you know, what, Even me no, and Mark don't understand. Yeah, I think, well, listen, yeah, I think... what, what we're going to get, what we're going to get, James, is, is we're going to get Primera La, La Liga, then we're going to get Segunda, then we're going to get Primera, Primera, then Segunda. Segunda. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's very it's very complicated. I think if you bought in a branding um, specialist, he would be horrified. But then again, isn't that isn't that the story of Spanish football anyway? Well, I mean, to be fair, it's the same in England. I mean, you've got the, the third division will effectively be the fifth division. But then in England, we have League One is effectively the third division. So I guess it's just the way That's that true. football's gone. That's true. That's true. Can I, James, can I, can I, sorry, Richie, go on. No, go on. No, I was going to say, right. Why don't, right. If I was to say to you, right. If I was, if I was the head of Menorca football and I said, listen, James, I want you to come over. I want you to, to come up with a master plan, which means that Menorca football can be full steam ahead and we can really crack on for the 21st century. We, we're going to have it. What would the three things that you bring into Menorca football to see it succeed? Oh, geez, that, that's put me on the spot there. Um, I mean, you for, I mean for anybody, mate. I mean, first and, first and foremost, you're, at, you're obviously you're at the hands of the football system. You know, if you like, obviously this season with the automatic promotion, you can get up, but you could do absolutely anything you want. But if you lose that playoff game to go up, then you can't do anything. I think for me, I think clearly you need to have, there needs to be money. So, you know, I I, I do wonder whether there is actually anything, I don't want to say sustainable because that makes it sound like it's unsustainable, but I do think that it requires to have that security of finance behind the club, whether that be Mercadal or whether it be UD Mahon, to cover the challenges of playing across the island. I think I'd try and 
try and try and encourage the collaborative approach and basically try and say, look, you know, we want the best Menorcan players to represent the Menorcan team of the island, if you like, a bit higher up. Um, so try and make, you know, again, it, does that become not like a representative side, but almost a bit like that, if you know what I mean. If like, if you've got one club that's the biggest, well, why not make sure the best players come through to us? And, you know, again, is the is there scope to have, I mean, I don't, you guys probably again know a bit more about this. Is there scope to have dual registration type agreements with players, you know, where they can play for the for the one team one week and then maybe go out on loan to one of the regional teams the following week and stuff like that. Is that is that a potential structure? But I think the key thing has got to be getting all of the individual clubs on the island together or behind you, if that makes sense. Um, so I think that would be the, the key for me because I think all the other stuff comes into place when you know you've got that. There are, there are some good facilities. You know, there's no worries in terms of facilities like to go up that level. Um, I think, you know, Mahones didn't play at a particularly great facility and that was one of their, that was one of the reasons for their downfall really because the owner wanted to, uh, sorry, the, the club owner wanted to develop the stadium a little bit and he got a bit of opposition from the council and obviously who pays for it and because he wanted to get more hospitality in there and, you know, more bits and bobs like that. Actually leaning on tourism as well potentially you know it, there's plenty of people who, who holiday in Menorca can you use that as a way of you know you, I mean we're I suppose we're good examples of it I mean I know you guys are over there but I, I see all the time on Twitter there's the the Real Mallorca English supporters club and, and Belarus and, and all that sort of thing it's like could one of them club you know could this, uh, the main club in Menorca do a bit more around that to to drum up interest that way because I think ultimately you're going to need people from outside of the island to buy shirts, buy sponsorship, travel to games because the island's not quite big enough to sustain it all itself. Interesting. Listen, um, we've talked a lot more than we thought we would actually, which is great. I mean, it's been fantastic. It's been, we've found out a lot, lot more. We're going to, we're going to cut it there. Um, and then we're going to re-record our Mallorca and Ibiza podcast. If, you, if you've got time to hang around with us, James. Yeah, yeah, fine. Good. So, um, listen, thanks for that. Um, if you want to know about Menorca football, James is your man. James, your Twitter feed is? Um, it's Menorca Football. Uh, Menorca Football. And Everything's you know... Menorca Football, yeah. Okay, MenorcaFootball.com and then same on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And the website... can, I just say, can I just say, James, you're doing a fantastic job. And a bit like me and Richie, you, you sometimes swim against the tide with these things as well. But uh, keep banging the drum. Because the more people get involved in Blairit football at every level, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah I, agree thanks. With that. I really enjoy it, to be honest. I really enjoy it. So, yeah. Well, it has to be a labour of love, mate, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're not getting paid, so we have to enjoy it. <laughs> uh, we'll sign off there, and uh, we'll be back uh, very shortly with our um, Mallorca and Ibiza podcast.